Steve Aries. He is a business coach, life coach, business strategist. A disruptor. He is known as the ruthless execution. execution. No, he's known as Mr. Ruthless Execution. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Harris. We'll be back. Dear to fly. Shh. Right now. Our next speaker was our keynote speaker in 2019, Thinkation. Came all the way from the United States of America. I think it was her first time coming to Nigeria, right? And Thinkation brought her. Thinkation brought her. Yeah, she enjoyed herself. I could see the joy. She, and she didn't come alone. She came with her, her husband and her daughter. I had a great time meeting her. <laughs> yeah. I wish she could come again live, but you know, we're also glad that she's joined the she's virtual joined experience. The She's an empowerment speaker, a life strategist, a best-selling author, a sister, a friend. Someone that believes that peace is the new success. I know it's amazing when you, someone says peace is the new success and she works with a troublemaker. <laughs> I don't know how you want to put those, the trouble and the peace. Well, let's welcome together Sherry Riley. Thinkation, the memorial edition. My husband and I thought about a recent talk that I did. And we felt like that it was very appropriate for such a time as this. So I hope you guys are blessed with the words that I hope continue to add to the celebration, add to the healing, and empower you to dare to fly. Uncertainty. Overwhelm. Confusion. Chaos. Anger. Frustration, disappointment, helplessness. Those are just a few of the emotions that have engulfed us, overwhelmed us, consumed us on a daily basis this year. Consistently, we've lost jobs, we've lost loved ones, Many of us are working from home while being the substitute teacher for our kids. This is not how 2020 was supposed to be. This was not it. This is not how it was supposed to be. On March 20th, or March 10th, no, it was actually March 10th. March 10th, I flew back from a business trip and I was excited. I was so excited about this first quarter. I was so excited about 2020. And a couple of days after I landed from that business trip is when the NBA had two players test positive for COVID-19 and they stopped their season. And right after that, everything stopped. And on that day, my business lost six figures in revenue. About three weeks later, woo, one of the closest people to me passed away. And I wasn't able to be with her during that transition. And as things started to open up, my husband and I were still very concerned. So we had to make the really tough decision to pull our youngest daughter from her lacrosse and her volleyball teams, sports that she absolutely loves. And most recently, our oldest daughter went to college. But we didn't get to do that traditional freshman experience of taking our daughter and getting her settled in because of the obvious and understandable protocols, the quarantine pro protocols of New York City. And then Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and so many other people that we will never know their names were unjust unjustly murdered. And our country had to take another serious look in the mirror and decide where, where does she stand on social injustice? 
And this was a relief for many. It was a burden for others. And unfortunately, it was a continued denial for far too many. And with all of this pain and discourse, many of us felt like, oh my God, can I take any more punches? Can I take any more punches? For me, at one point I was getting punch after gut punch after gut punch after gut punch to where I screamed from the bottom of my soul, I am done. I am done. I quit. I quit. And my dear friend of about 25 years was on the phone with me. She was like, whoa, sis. Whoa, whoa, wow. I've known you for a really long time. I have never, ever, ever heard those words come out of your mouth. And she said, the sad thing is, is I believe you. I believe you. And the truth is, I was done. I had done all I knew to do, and I was done. And as I laid on that bathroom floor and I cried 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 some more and I cried. I cried because I really wanted to quit. And I cried even harder because I knew I couldn't quit. I want to let that sink in. I cried even harder because I knew I could not quit. With all the pain and suffering that we've had in 2020, I know many of us have felt like, you know what? We can just cancel this year, right? Especially in this age of cancel culture. <laughs> in this age of, let's just cancel it. Let's just be done. Let's just like me, let's just quit. Let's just stop. And I, and I know Kim started with this, but it's so important that I want to, I wanna, actually, I want to read it. I want to read it for us because I think it's so important for us to really understand. What if 2020 isn't canceled? What if 2020 is the year we've been waiting for? A year so uncomfortable, so painful, so scary, so raw, that it finally forces us to grow. A year that screams so loud, finally, awakening us from our ignorant slumber. A year that we finally accept the need for change, declare change, work for change, become the change. A year we finally band together instead of pushing each other further apart. 2020 isn't canceled, but rather it's the most important year of them all. Because see, as I laid on that bathroom floor, defeated, deflated, and empty, it reminded me of another time that I was exhausted and absolutely burned out. And it reminded me of when I was exhausted and when I was burned out, I just kept saying, I'm empty. I'm empty. I don't have anything else to give, I'm empty. And as I was in that very tough and challenging place, I started to realize that, you know what, Sherry? You have got to shift your mind. You've got to shift this thinking. You got to shift this. And as I laid there and I thought about just how empty I was, I started to really think about, you know what, Sherry? Are you empty? Because that just sounds so discouraging. Or have you given your all? And when I really thought about it, that was more of my truth. I had given my all. And every time I said it, I felt just a little more encouraged. I had given my all. Every time I said it, I got a little more energized. I have given my all. Every time I said it, 
I felt like I had accomplished something. I felt victorious. I had given my all. And when I focused on not I'm empty and I'm exhausted and I'm burnt out, when I focused on I have given my all, that's when I realized it wasn't time to quit. It was time to recharge. It was time to recharge. How to power forward in times of uncertainty in order for us to recharge, refocus, in order for us to rejuvenate, in order for us to get back up off that floor, we have to ask one very important question. One very important question. What does this make possible? What does this make possible? Because when we think about that question, when we answer that question, it allows us to, you know, okay, let me, when I was, when I was writing my book, Exponential Living, Stop Spending 100% of Your Time on 10% of Who You Are, uh, my dear friend Usher, he, he wrote the foreword for my book. And I, um, <laughs> I went over to his house and we were sitting in the kitchen. And I went over there because I wanted to just spend some time, right? I wanted to just really share with him the, the vision and the purpose of this book that had been taking me seven years to, to write. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I'd been pouring my heart and soul into this book. And so I, I went to his house and we're sitting in the kitchen and I'm, I'm sharing with him about the power of peace about the power of peace and peace is the core of what we need and peace is the power, peace is the new success. And I could tell he was, you know, he was kind of looking at me a little funny, you know, but I'm thinking he's just really, really listening, right? And so I keep going, I keep going and he finally goes, Sherry, hold on, hold on, hold on, stop, stop, stop. I don't want to be disrespectful, but you sound delusional. <laughs> I'm glad he didn't want to be disrespectful. <laughs> and so I'm, just, I'm kind of stunned. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean? And he's like, you sound the, so, okay. He was like, let me get this straight. Cause you want me to write the forward to this. So I need to understand this. He was like, so what you're saying is that when people are faced with challenges and struggles and pain and frustration, they're just supposed to go, ah, it's okay, I've got peace, everything's cool, I have peace. <laughs> I was like, no, it's the exact opposite. What I'm saying is that in the midst of the challenges, in the midst of the frustration, in the midst of the pain, that's when it's most important for us to lock into our inner peace. We just saw how we center ourselves and why it's so important to center ourselves because that's where our power is. And so I was like, Usher, it's the exact opposite. What I'm saying is that peace empowers us to see the possibilities. You wanna answer the question, what does this make possible? Then you gotta lock into your peace because that's what lets you see the possibilities of what's possible. When we focus on our peace and get solid in our peace, we can see the possibilities. When we get focused in on peace, that's when we get our vision. That's when we get our vision. And when you get clear on your vision, is when you can make a decision. See, the challenge is when we get in struggles and challenges like 2020, so many of us wanna just say, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I don't know where to help. I don't know where to support. But when we get solid in our peace, it gives us the vision so that we can then decide. My favorite book, my favorite book says, write the vision and make it plain. Peace gives us vision, 
vision empowers us to decide. And then when we decide, we get clarity. We get clarity. Clarity gives you the confidence to commit. Clarity gives you the confidence to commit. What I've discovered is that so many of us are just trying to, to repair the shattered places in our lives. When this current trauma that we're in, I don't think it was meant for us to, to fix the broken self that we brought into 2020. What I believe is that this current trauma was meant to shake us up just so we could own our greatness instead of trying to prove our greatness. Because when you have clarity, you get the confidence to commit to your own greatness. And when you bring peace and clarity together, oh my God, you get the courage to take action. And that's where our results are. That's where the results are. When we hit a place in our lives, like 2020 is presented, we have to stay committed to our goal and flexible with our plan. We have to stay committed to our goal and flexible with our plan. I saw a post not too long ago, and the post said that um, I thought 2020 was going to be the year that I get everything that I wanted. <laughs> but actually, 2020 was the year that I learned to appreciate everything that I have. And that's the power of this year. That's the power of how you power forward in times of uncertainty. The first thing you do is you gotta answer that question. What does this make possible? And when you focus in on the answer, the how is wrapped up in peace, clarity, and courage. We got to have the peace so that we can get the vision, so that we can decide. And when we decide, that's when we get the clarity to have the confidence to commit. And when we commit, we get the courage so that we can take action to get the results. I celebrate with all of you the life, the legacy, and the love of Yvon King. As he would say to me and my husband all the time, I'm just your boy. I send this tribute as my heart is overwhelmed with just love for him and the entire family, the Think Nation community. I celebrate the legacy, the vision, and the heart. My husband, my youngest daughter, and I was treated to the most amazing experience for Think Asian 2019 as we came from Atlanta, Georgia in the USA to Lagos, Nigeria. And from the moment Yubang and I spoke, it was an immediate connection to his brilliance, to his vision, to his compassion, and to his heart for himself, for his family, for his community, and for his beloved Nigeria. And when we landed, he treated us as royalty, not because we were any different than everyone else. He treated everyone with royalty and respect. And I'm so honored. I'm so blessed to have had the time to spend with him, his beautiful wife, his amazing children, and all the amazing people that he exposed us to when we were in Lagos. And whenever he came to the States, my husband and I were always there. My husband, there was such an impact. There was such an impact that Yubang had, an everlasting impact that he had on my husband, that he had on so many of us from around the world. So I join you in celebrating and lifting up and honoring. You will be missed on this side of heaven, but we know God's plans are perfect even when we don't understand. And so we celebrate you, we honor you because in God's infinite perfection, we know that the work that you started will continue. 
that the commitment that you made will bear fruit and the hearts that you have touched will stay motivated to continue to honor the engagement, your legacy, and the impact of your presence. And as you would say to us, I'm just your boy, I'm just your girl, sending you love. Thank you.